Um, We're going to Animal Kingdom. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> ตาเหรอโอเคโอ้ยนี่ด้วยนี่ด้วยตะกูคอนจุ๊กก็ให้ลิจ้าให้ลุงมองช้อบัดจะให้ให้โอเจ้านะโอเจ้าโอเจ้
chỉ nói cho chị mới nhận thấy nó 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 mỏ nên nó chạy là nó chua nó chạy lỡ tí cậu ốm mừng mà lên lấy nó chạy và cá nè và cá cá lỡ chả mỏi chả nó nó cá sấp lỡ liều chả cái bọn nó mà lỡ ô tô mua mua thì mỏ mỏ ba chi có bao nhiêu nhà cha có chưa cá này chị nô nè bắt chăn đâu nè nó ăn nhiều rên nó thì nhà ăn nhiều rên nó cái chị nó ồ ồ be careful nhá cái chị nó mở nó mở tao mà mày cho nó mở xí cái này á bây giờ mình chỉ nô bây giờ xa này thì chị nó bây giờ họ ăn nó mồng kinh đong nè thì chị nó bây giờ chúng mày chơi trong mỏ trôi chơi tàu trong nè chỗ này chỗ trên chỗ của chấm nhỏ hơn chỗ nó mới nhỏ chứ cái giờ chờ hai đầu đó là nó em mở mà bro có chưa cả có nhìn chưa chưa Ok, chú ơi chá Cái chí nè Cá cá lỡ Hai ly chá nè Thank you Bye bye Hai thank you mà Thank you Ôi chào Chào Sẽ hai lúc mong lì Mà mình khí lỡ chá hai lỡ xí nó như cái chỗ đê hầu nữa Sì, 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 sì Có tao lì Có sẵn trôi như thế hả? Chữ lò nhìn đi Mẹ mẹ bé lì Lò? Có hầu lỡ lò tối dài hay mà? Chú hên Nó sẽ tiền tụa Ờ, thích chín chú ạ Ờ, ờ Nói chẳng biết nó tắt chứ Tại lòng chín đấy Chúng ta bị ông mắc cá mòi nhé, chúng ta bị ông mắc cá mòi nhé Nhưng mà chúng ta bị ông mắc cá mòi nhé Chúng ta bị ông mắc cá mòi nhé Ví dụ một cái chế đó lúc nào giờ Africa cho bé một chai chè một chai chè để chị ô lại để đi tiệc cho tiến hành lại cho to một chai xem Thank you. 
chế hậu đó Nhanh giờ chế trong cái đó Cho bé một tạ hạt giống cái Chế chế
before we do so, I just want to point out this funky looking tree to our right. This is called a baobab tree. Now, baobab trees are also known as a tree of life. Animals can use as a pretty convenient drinking source. So for example, elephants can use their tusks to poke holes into the trunk. It's able to conserve so much water because they go about nine months out of the year without any leaves. Alrighty, so now as we head down this hill, we are officially entering the savannah. Now the savannah is by far, without a doubt, my favorite ecosystem because it's home to many famous animals. This is elephants, lions, rhinos, and cheetahs, just to name a few. Now, at the moment, things are a little bit quiet over on this side of the savannah, which tells me everyone's hanging out probably a little further up the road. So it might be a couple more minutes before we see some activity. Do see a few zebras and some wildebeest out in the distance, but again, it's gonna be just a couple more moments. In the meantime, we can admire the beautiful landscape. Now, one thing that we do like to talk about here on the Savannah landscape, if we take a look around, a lot of the trees here look a little bit bare branched until about 20 feet up in the air. That's not natural. That is thanks to the giraffes that live out here on the reserve. So once full grown, giraffes fit, get between the most common questions we get is about their stripe patterns. So are they black with white or white with black stripes? The answer is in their nose. So for the mountain zebra, they have a black nose, which means they're going to be black with white stripes. Same rule applies. No two are ever exactly the same. Now the animals like the zebras, the wildebeest, and the sable antelopes, they all fall into the category of the lawnmowers. They spend most of their days grazing on the grasses, keeping them nice and short. So we don't have any electric lawnmowers, we just primarily rely on the animals to do most of that landscape work for us. Not to mention all this vegetation that you see is in their diet, so it is a win for everybody. Now you might see some real big horns way out in the distance to our right side. They do belong to some Ancoli cattle. We're not going to get a great view of them on this side of the savannah, but once we get to the other side of the hill a little bit later on, we might be able to get a little bit closer, assuming that they stay put, of course. Now on either side of us, we're passing by some termite mounds, so these orange and brown color structures. Most are made of termite saliva as well as dirt and dung. Once the sun dries with the saliva, the mounds become hard as concrete. So then animals can use them as scratching posts and lookout posts when trying to find their prey and or predators. So now you'll see what I mean with those horns way out there in the distance there to our right. And then a little bit closer are, are some more of those wildebeest. Now wildebeest, they are migratory animals. So every year, anywhere from 1 million to 1.5 million wildebeest will migrate together, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 miles across Africa, typically in the pattern of rainfall to find fresh vegetation. All right, and over here on our left-hand side, we got just difficult. So this is a them are called since they tend to tower over everything. Like I said, tallest animals in the world, getting to about 20 feet. And like I said, Maasai giraffes. So there are seven different species in the world. The best way to tell them apart is going to be by their coat pattern. So we say that the Maasai giraffes have a more rough kind of are as unique to them as our human fingerprints. Alrighty, so we talked about the tree trimmers and we talked about the lawnmowers. There's also bulldozers of the savannah. And that's going to be the job for animals like elephants. They're going to use their trunks and super strong legs to knock down trees. That way they got easier access to the vegetation. And then other animals can use those trees as good scratching posts and lookout posts when trying to find their prey and or predators. Now in the meantime, over on all gray monkeys hanging out around here, these guys are called mandrels. <laughs> now mandrels, they are the largest monkeys in the world. So males like the big, between 30 to 40, they're very well known for the red and blue colors on their faces that grow brighter as they get excited. They've also got this uh, pouch on the inside down to their shoulder. They can store a whole stomach's worth of food in those pouches. Now I did see the elephant out here. Might get one more view here. There is a break in the trees. These are a couple of African elephants hanging out around here. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we know that for two different reasons. The first most obvious being the shape of their ears. So we say that African elephants have ears that loosely and then for their Asian elephant counterparts, they have much smaller kind of pointier ear down the road. In the meantime, we got one more bridge to cross and we're gonna take this one holy poly. That's the Swahili phrase and it just means to go very slowly. Animal. Where you will start to see some footprints and tusks to scrape at the red clay, get a 
Chu chu lo. Chu 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 nhà bò hòn chu thế này. Hai tê chu chu. Bò hòn chu thế. Yeah, yeah. Another cool thing that elephants can do with that clay is use it as a sunscreen. I believe I mentioned this with the black rhinos earlier, but animals like rhinos and elephants have really thick, dry, and sensitive skin. So the elephants, they're going to use their trucks to spray things like mud, dry dirt, and skin. And they can also use their ears to cool themselves down as well. So you remember those blood vessels that can lower their body temperature up to about 15 degrees, which is going to be super convenient, especially all those extra hot days. Now they're all eating at the moment. Also pretty common sight to see with elephants. They've got some pretty big stomachs to feed, but they are not meat eaters. They are strictly herbivores or vegetarians. They just eat every hard to visualize. <laughs> all right, now a while ago we talked about those Ancoli cattle and look domesticated them. Now obviously those horns are pretty tough to visual. We even saw them on the other side of the savannah. They stretch about six on their internal body temperature. So those horns only weigh about three to five pounds each. Now, the flamingos are first born and hatch out of those egg casings. Those feathers are the furthest thing from pink possible. They are a dark gray color. Physically, flamingos grow very quickly, but it takes about a year to be able to for those feathers to lighten up entirely. There's also a mud hole or mud wallow, as we like to call it there to our left. It's going to be a good gathering spot for other animals with sensitive skin, similar to elephants and similar to black rhinos. But around here, we can typically find the white rhinos. Now, white rhinos, they're going to plop down in the mud, roll around in it, and get absolutely covered from the head to the toe. They're actually coming up here on our right hand side. They're kind of hanging in the sky right there in the opening uh, of the trees. That is a newest addition to the rhino family here on the reserve. That is baby ranger. So I'm sorry, one of three new additions to the rhino family. Ranger's the oldest of the three. He just turned a year old back in October. <laughs> So the white rhinos, they get their name from the Afrikaans word white. That translates to the word wide instead of white, which refers to their square broad shaped mouth. They're also the largest. Yeah. Now, cheetahs, they are the fastest land animals in the world. So they can reach zero to 60 miles an hour in just a few couple hundred yards, which means when they're hunting, they have to get their timing as close to perfection as possible. So we've got a couple things to help them out with this. Cheetahs are one of the very few big cats who hunt during the daytime. So they are going to use that sunlight to their advantage. They've got these black teardrops that run from their inner tear ducts down to their nose. Those do the same kind of thing that black paint does on a football player's cheeks or just quite simply sunglasses. That way they don't get blinded while they are hunting. No, totally. Okay, yeah. We are still in big cat territory and we're coming up on a Kobe rock formation. The big male up there and the, uh, hanging out on the middle rock there at the back. We're wow. Now, if he stays sitting up like that, we might be able to see his face over on the other side of the They don't love the sunlight and they don't love the heat, so usually by this time of day, there's not really a lot going on up here. Still kind of the same thing. He's not really doing much, but at least he's out to 20 hours every single day. Not out of laziness, that's just to help conserve their energy. Now, real quick, I want to point out the Bontabak on our right side. Small antelope hanging out there in that sandy patch. Bontabak is right. Because of that coat, they were hunted almost to the point of extinction about 100 years ago, to where they were only 17, helping to increase their numbers and then save their population from extinction. So today, the bots box are no longer considered in danger. Just a cool little story that I like to talk about. All right, and up here at the back, we're gonna get to see his face, yay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, contrary to popular belief, it's not the males who do the hunting. It's the females or the lionesses. While they are out hunting, the male is going to stick back to guard his territory and his pride. He can defend his pride by using his roar. See, look at the rocks hanging out all right next to each other. Now, the warthogs, they're going to use their curled up tusks to dig out these holes and burrows and then back into them when they sleep. That way, those tusks are sticking out to warn off predators. 
they get their name from the literal ostrich head in our way. <laughs> so a couple of females. And we know that based off the color of their feathers. So female inside. So it's also going to be the feet in the world to the point where a grown oh, man can stand on one and they're not going to yeah. so They're not that heavy. They only weigh about three. The fastest thing on two legs. So although they are considered to be birds. which in turn is going to help out our economy here in Harambe. So that's a good example of how humans and animals can live together harmoniously and peacefully as long as it's done right. Not to mention they are pretty stinking cute, very friendly and very playful. That play behavior is cool for us to see, but also good for them for maturing physically and displaying dominance among their groups. Alrighty, my friends, so unfortunately it does look like our safari venture is slowly coming to a close because we are approaching the outskirts of the village. But I just want to take a moment to thank you all so much for riding with me. Really hope you enjoyed it and that you got to see at least a few animals that you were really looking forward to. We are going to be coming up to our unloaded area here in the next couple of minutes. So now is going to be a pretty good time for you to double check your seatbelts with you. I'd really hate for you to have to check it all the way back to Africa to get your stuff. And if I had any wilderness explorers on board, you've been riding the Simba once. So that is Simba, like the lion, and the number one. That'll be found on page 15 of your guidebooks. And then if you head back into the village, find the standby entrance for safaris. And across the pathway, you'll see a white tent with some wilderness Pretty explorers hanging out the sun. Isana, thank you so much. Once again, guys, my name is Caitlin. If you have any questions, feel free to come up to me. Mom, I'm Lilo. Yes. Okay. เราจะไปจอดเราเจอเราเจอเราหมดเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวมึงต่อเลยรู้เฮ้ยเดี๋ยวนี้เดี๋ยวนะมาชี้ดีด้วยนะเดี๋